Okay, so I've got a couple students that are working on this topic right now, and so let's do it. Let's do one together. Uh, identifying acids and bases by their reaction with water. All right, so let's read the question. Some chemical compounds are listed in the first compound in the first column of the table below. Each column, each I'm sorry, each compound is soluble in water. Imagine that a few tenths of a, a mole, that is just a little bit of this stuff, was dissolved. Let me make this screen a little bit bigger was dissolved in a liter of water. So you don't have very little of it. It's dissolved in water. The important chemical species that will be present in this solution are written in the second column of the table. Okay, so if you take this stuff here, just a little bit of it, and you dissolve it in water, what are you going to look at when you find, when you look at the water? What are you going to see? And so here are the, here are the, the, uh, the issues. If you take this stuff, potassium hydroxide, which you've named before in previous topics, if you take potassium hydroxide and you dissolve it in water, this is what you get. You're going to have some potassium ions, some hydroxide ions, some water. All right. Now, you're supposed to say by looking at this, is it ionic and or is it molecular and or is it strong acid and or is it a weak acid, right? We select all of these that apply. That's what we're doing. Now, in order to prepare for this, I snapshotted it. Uh, this table and put it over my sketchbook so I could make notes on it. So we're looking at the same thing here, okay? So again, we're going to take some, a little bit of potassium hydroxide, which is here, dissolve it in a liter of water. When we do, this is what we find. We find potassium ions, hydroxide ions, and water ions. If that's true, what does that make it, okay? So first of all, we're going to ask, if is this, is this uh, ionic or molecular? Well, if it's ionic, it has to have a metal in it, right? So we look over here and we see, boom, potassium. There's a potassium. So yes, this is definitely ionic. Okay. Now if it's ionic, it's not molecular. All right. So these two are, it's either one or the other. And you would imagine it's either an acid or it's a base too. So it's only, and it's not a strong acid and a weak acid, right? So it's going to be one of those. Well, now we know that a strong acid is defined as something that dissociates completely. That is, if we have HA... That means it goes in the solution as H plus and its conjugate base, right? Completely. That is, there is none of this left. When it goes in the solution, there's no more of that. I mean, that's what the single directional arrow means, okay? Now, weak acid goes both ways. That means once it, when it's dissolved, you have some of this and some of this, right? And by the way, you know that this proton right here, this H plus, piggybacks on a water molecule. So we really write that usually as H3O plus. Okay, and I can see that there's some H3O plus up here, so this would be good to know. These two are basically equivalent, all right? So look over here. Can you see that with if we have potassium hydroxide, let's go back to blue. If we have potassium hydroxide and it goes into water and there's no potassium hydroxide left, right? It's all dissolved. Can you see that we only have potassium and hydroxide and water? Therefore, it is a strong base. I should have said this also. Don't forget that a base makes hydroxides and an acid makes hydroniums, right? That's the definition, okay? I'm scanning down here now. I see another hydroxide. That must be a base. And I see a couple hydroniums. So let's do red for those, right? So this must be an acid, right? So whatever this is, it's an acid. Well, you named this before. You named this a few weeks ago and you named it nitrous acid, right? Because it's the acid that goes along with the ion nitrite. Now look at this. We take some nitrous acid, we put it in water. When we look at the water, we see that we have some hydronium, we have some nitrites, we have some of this, it's unreacted. Ah, if we have some nitrous acid which is unreacted after it gets in the water, it must be a weak acid. Okay? So since it's a weak acid, it's not a strong acid, and since it's a weak acid, it's not a base, okay? So we now have to find out if it's molecular or ionic. So in order to find out if it's ionic or molecular, I come over here and look for metal. Do you see any metals in here? Hydrogen's not a metal, nitrogen and oxygen, no metals, okay? Therefore, it's molecular. All right, so let's go back over here. Let's go down to the third one now. I see that we have CN... I'm sorry, C2, H5, and H2. This is probably ethylamine, although you, you, you have not learned how to name this, okay? So we have ethylamine here, and it produces uh, hydroxides. Therefore, it's a base. It's one of these. Let's go back to blue. 
okay so it's one of these right it's not one of these okay now oh also can, let's let's find out if it's ionic or molecular first do you see any metals in here carbon's not a metal hydrogen's not a metal nitrogen's not a metal and I already said hydrogen's not a metal so it must be molecular right okay and we know that it's a base because it produces hydroxide all right the next thing we need to know is do we have um, does this stuff all react or is there some ethylamine left and look at that there it is so we have some unreacted ethylamine when we dissolve a little bit in a liter of water therefore it's a weak base okay let's go back to red because we're dealing with acids here we know we're dealing with acids because it says hydronium so it's not one of these it must be one of these right strong or weak and let's first of all find out if it's ionic or molecular is hydrogen a metal no bromine no oxygen no it's not none of those are metals therefore this is also molecular okay now is this a strong acid or a weak acid well in order to find out if it's a weak acid we will we, we have to find some unreacted acid over here right in the um, vessel after it's been dissolved and shoot it's all gone look at that sure enough it's all gone so every bit of this reacted to become hydronium bromate or that's per bromate I beg your pardon you memorized that uh, a few weeks ago per bromate and water so this then is a strong acid okay let's go over to our our window um, let's see ionic the top one was ionic and then they were all molecular boom boom and boom and then we had a strong base and a weak acid strong base and a weak acid and a weak base and a strong acid huh weak base and a strong acid Alex does not always do this for us give us one of each but all right so I'm expecting we'll get some green here okay hope that's helpful again what we did was in order to find out if it was ionic we looked for a metal okay only one of these had a metal in order to find out if it was a base, we looked for hydroxide. So all the bases had hydroxide, hydroxide and hydroxide, right? Or hydronium and hydronium. And then, of course, also to find out if it was strong, we looked to see if it was all reacted. If it was all reacted, then it was strong. Okay, hope that's helpful.